uh, we're joined uh, from Washington by Keith Cowing, who is uh, editor of nasawatch.com. Thank you so much for speaking to us, Keith. Um, what, what's happening there at the moment? What's the what, what's what's the sort of the rundown? Do you think for this uh, NASA live stream? When, when can we expect to see those pictures? Well, any moment now, and of course, they've always got to have everybody say how great this was and how happy they are to be involved, and that's to be expected. This has been a long wait, and uh, if anything was uh, previewed last night about the deep field image, these are going to be stunning images. So everybody's sort of, I guess, waiting for everybody to shut up so we can see the pictures. Yeah, we'd love to see those pictures. And um, tell us, how do we make this accessible to our audience, perhaps people who aren't necessarily particularly interested in astronomy and don't have a scientific background, how would you uh, convey the excitement that surrounds these images to people who, who perhaps up until this point haven't paid a huge amount of attention to, uh, to, to what happens in distant galaxies? Well, first of all, I'm 66, so I grew up with black and white photos of the cosmos. When Hubble came online 30 years ago, people were stunned by how much more we could see. Flash forward, there's now a full generation of people who've only seen Hubble, and they have children who've only seen Hubble. So you want a, a reference point. If you were in the States to go to a fast food restaurant and you grabbed a straw, the picture we saw yesterday was akin to taking the straw and looking at your backyard only through that hole. And if your backyard is like 50, 100 meters long, imagine how long it would take just to take a picture of the, that tree. That's what we saw yesterday evening, one little picture. Imagine how much it would take to just view the entire cosmos. That is now what's going to be available to all of us and to this next generation. They're not going to know the universe's little smudgy pictures. Everything's going to be crisp and bright, and we'll be able to see back 13 billion years. So if I was a parent right now with kids growing up, I'd just be sitting back, just imagining what their future is going to be like. <laughs> OK, you've definitely uh, helped us to get more more enthusiastic. James, uh, just listening to uh, what Keith was saying there, um, what would these what's the possible use of of what we're learning from these types of, of images being sent back? How, how is it useful to us here on planet Earth? Well, it's interesting because it's quite philosophical in a way. I mean, what we're looking for is the, the origins of our universe, where we come from why we're here, how the, you know, how the, 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 uh, the galaxy formed. And, and these are the questions and other questions that we can't yet actually fathom in a way. There are some questions that will be answered by uh, this new system that haven't been asked yet. So I have to see where that goes. Of course, there's also technology that's been created along the way while we were uh, creating the James Webb Telescope. Uh, for example, for now, I just have two examples, but uh, some of this technology is going to be used in eye surgery uh, because they've managed to create some tools that will be used in order uh, to, well, cure eye, eye diseases. So uh, there's always some interesting... Uh, you know, uh, for technological fallout from these kinds of uh, endeavors, because it's been 25 years of development and uh, very important. So, um, yeah, we'll have to see as we go along what we do discover. For now, the idea, of course, is to just go further and further away from Earth and back in time, because you've got to remember also uh, that these telescopes are time machines.